Hello, my name is Asaf Maron and I'm a researcher at the Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel. This is joint work with the Oli Monad, Sarah Pollack, and David Avera. I'm going to talk today about how we can prepare a system for things uh, that are unexpected, that all the designers and stakeholders could not and did not um, think about it, did not plan for. Can we make a system prepare for this? Let's look at a video. This is, was taken in Japan in 2011. What we have seen here is that drivers were going on the highway and suddenly they've seen a wave of tsunami and they reacted to it by turning around and trying to escape. I hope all of them uh, made it to safety. Uh, we're all very sorry for the lives lost, but uh, we will use this as a, a case in point for illustrating um, what you're trying to say. Could we build in 2010 an autonomous vehicle that in 2011 when the tsunami hit, would react as humans did? And let's assume that then we had a, even all of today's AI technologies which evolved greatly in the, uh, in the last decade. And my assumption is that clearly no one has anticipated disaster, not of this magnitude, and no driver's training or very few driver training told people, if you see a wave in the middle of the highway, turn around, even though it's against the law, you're driving against traffic, and so on. What is it that the people knew uh, to do, and can we teach systems to do the same? Um, I will try to summarize everything in my talk in one slide. The message is as follows. First of all, despite all careful planning, autonomous systems will eventually encounter unexpected situations. And I will try to prove that in my talk. Also, there's an assumption that even though it was unexpected, we want systems, especially autonomous systems, to handle these well, whatever that means or correctly, or at least as a human would have handled it. And this sounds a bit self-contradictory, um, or even just hard, how do you do that? But what I will try to argue in this talk is that this is realistic, this is achievable, and I will show techniques of how to do some of that. What we have in this uh, paper and in this talk are several design tips and methodologies and design patterns for how to expect, how to do expect the unexpected. And we conclude with a brief outline for a rigorous scientific approach of what does it mean to be unexpected and what does it mean to hunt it. So where the unpredictable or unexpected things come into uh, the lives of autonomous systems? First of all, there are things <coughs> Uh, that were created after the system was developed and deployed. For instance, if you're an autonomous vehicle developed uh, five years ago, uh, at least I did not know then about the prevalence of uh, electric scooters in the streets, on the sidewalk, popping in and out of everywhere. Maybe it was not uh, even in the design. Okay, and many other things could um, emerge in this way. Um, and of course, whenever something like this uh, we learn about, we put it in our system, we distribute updates, but not everybody installs the update, and you still want your AV or your hospital robot to encounter such things. Next factor is cost and schedule resources. We, we predicted some things will happen, but we don't plan for them because uh, we think they are less likely, 
and we cannot afford to do it now because of the project cost or because of resources, you know, we cannot install another camera on our satellite because it will be too heavy and so on. And we assume that either there will be a person there to help or, or that the environment will be sufficiently controlled that it will not happen. But things will eventually do happen, but this is a source of um, unexpectedness. Another one is worldwide distribution. You invariably live in one environment and in other environments, other things happen that you didn't think about. You know, a hospital robot may be deployed in a field hospital in the mud, or uh, uh, other things like that. Um, I apologize for trying to be brief in our, this, uh, our context. And then the combinatorial explosions are many known variables that we cannot test them all, so some combination will be unexpected. Finally, the malicious attacks. There will be people out there, hackers and so on, that will try to find every vulnerability. So everything we did not plan for explicitly will or, or might somehow occur and be sought after by other people. So we need to be prepared for this as well. Uh, but is it possible to prepare for the unexpected? And I argue, or we argue, the authors, that it is possible. First of all, we see that humans do that, so it is not theoretically impossible. Um, and second, the correct handling is not just a tacit, you know, elusive, implicit kind of thing. People discuss that very explicitly in the court of law. Let's say something happened and a human or machine did not handle it correctly a judge will come and discuss what was the reason a person doing this. They, should, they would have called for help, they would have used this resource and so on. So we do have a discussion of what was expected in the occurrence of this unexpected thing. And there are a lot of stories in our culture about people doing uh, things out of necessity or surprise or whatever, and, and, and we do relate to it a lot. So I believe it is possible. So we suggest in this uh, paper of this new idea in emerging research, design patterns and um, uh, development methodology tips of how to deal with that. First of all, um, it will be uh, uh, in the behavior specification, and, and these are the main themes, and I'm going to elaborate on that. The behavior specification, what the system should know, how the system should relate to other systems, and of course, uh, uh, <clears throat> there is the just good design practices, you know, understanding the expected very, very well. This is what we do every day in uh, normal uh, development practices. I'm not going to talk about uh, this number four, but I'm going to talk about one, two, and two. And we start with number one. First of all, the high level behaviors. You see, danger run away. This is something we can program. Somebody is throwing things at you, seek. Shelter. We can program that even if you don't know who this somebody is, you don't know where who, uh, where these stones are being thrown. You, you don't know that what is thrown at you are stones. You can still seek shelter. Okay, and people do that. The uh, second tip is probing. You don't know what you're looking at. You can apply sensors and action to discover what it is. A vehicle, a factory vehicle, sees an obstacle on the floor in the path in the yard and it was not programmed to recognize it, but maybe it can nudge it, it can uh, uh, push it a little bit, see how much it weighs, see does it say fragile on it, uh, maybe send a picture to the internet to discover what it is. Should it be bypassed? Should they call security? Should it just push it away? And so on. Another important aspect is reflection. The system should know its own state. Did I try this already? Am I stuck? Okay. Uh, uh, what am I doing now? This is a property which is increasingly available in software, but uh, it is not a design principle, and I believe it should become that the system should be self-aware, not in terms of like a human being, what is myself, but to know at any time what is its state and what should it do if it was there already, if it was successful, not successful, if it's stuck, and so on. Uh, the, Number four in this list, and, and the list can be very long, is look ahead and look around. There are many ways 
and many alternatives uh, for doing things in runtime planning, runtime simulation, preparing alternatives ahead of time for when things don't work as planned is very useful and systems should be built in this way. The second aspect is system knowledge. The system should know its own capabilities on and its own limitations. What you see in the images, Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Terminator, uh, uh, the second movie, where he knows that there are some things he can do and some things he cannot do, but he also knows that if a uh, sudden switch is flipped in his head, which he cannot himself do, he's asking a human for help, uh, then he will be able to do uh, some other thing or will not be affected by certain things. And this knowledge of what the system can and cannot do is uh, uh, very important in dealing with uh, <coughs> uh, the unexpected, especially the capability. Okay, you, you have you, he does that because he needs, he knows what he needs to do, he knows what the capabilities are and how to access them. General word knowledge. Uh, if I spoke about the obstacles before, even if the uh, the robot was not programmed to handle cardboard boxes on the path. You should be able to know that they exist. You know, every child knows what they are. If you see the chain uh, in the gateway, okay, you should know what the chain is. You should be able to deal with that like everybody else does, even though nobody thought the path will ever be closed. Automated runtime knowledge acquisition is very important. This is the event of the Tesla accident, Tesla uh, uh, autonomous driving uh, feature. There, there was an accident where a, a big uh, agricultural machinery crossed the way and the, for a variety of reasons. I don't know if the exact ex the explanation is correct, but it's good illustration. The driving car thought it was a sign that it can pass underneath and, um, and a collision resulted. Uh, the main point is what it did not recognize this agricultural machinery. And I'm thinking, how do drivers recognize this? You recognize it because you see them around you all the time. If an autonomous system looks around it and all its copies around the world look around them and learn that there are agricultural machines and houses and strange things and funny signs that they do not understand, even before it becomes critical, they can share this knowledge and learn and deal with it when it crosses their way and interfere with their normal op operation. Finally, learning as activity is such a big thing today in AI autonomous system. I'm not going to elaborate on that. Of course, all the techniques that exist for adaptivity and adapting itself to, to new situations, they apply and, and they uh, are coming this topic. But another a uh, theme or principle is that systems should recognize that they are not alone. They are part of a, a, of a web of, uh, of, of a social environment of people and machines and so on. Uh, on the right, we see cars waiting on the dock to go on a ferry. You know, you have something, a robot or a car or an electric or autonomous river needs to get you from A to B. Okay, the vehicle may reach an obstacle, the, the ocean or the, the, the bay, and they should be able to look, I cannot do that, I did not fail my mission, there is somebody else who should be able to break this particular obstacle. Another aspect is uh, mimicking others. Uh, in the tsunami situation or in other situations like this, I assume many people don't react to seeing the wave or the danger, they react to the fact that other people are running away and says, everybody's running away, I might as well do the, the thing as opposed to uh, waiting to see what they're running away from. And of course, there are many decision processes that to, to determine what is appropriate and what is not. Uh, another aspect relates to the scope of the film, being able to ask for help and also enable passive acceptance of help. So, you know, if a vehicle is stuck, okay, well, today we can call a tow truck and, and, and the robot might not have to do the same. But uh, some of these things are simple for instance, let's say a robot may run out of battery uh, in the middle of the street or may just fall on its side, okay? Uh, if it's, if there's an easier way to make it upright, maybe a passerby will, uh, uh, make it stand upright and continue running on its way if this is how it was built. Or if the 
and there's a sticker on it on which number to call if it lost all communication or if there's a power outlet uh, that is really accessible that somebody can charge it, they can help it. Okay? Uh, and this is not just, you know, the factory determining the lost contact with the robot looking for his last communication, going, seeking it out, taking it back home. Uh, so this will enable this robot to complete its mission. Uh, another aspect is communicating what you're doing, what you plan to do, and what you know. We see here a very simple communication of plans, this car plans to turn. And if you think about it, even if these autonomic vehicle uh, cameras are, are blocked and it doesn't know and it doesn't see uh, that an oncoming vehicle is actually coming, uh, then the other vehicle knows that it is going to turn and it's going to cross the lane and it may be able to avoid a collision even if uh, um, this oncoming car came out of nowhere and it was really unexpected. And of course, negotiation and again, adaptation. You know, I cannot do this goal, maybe I can do another goal, maybe I can do it another way, maybe the customer will suffice with something else. All of these important aspects of dealing with the unexpected. The unexpected is not necessarily a given that you must deal with, uh, maybe there's something else that you can do instead. So these were a, a list of certain uh, sort of simple tips and design principles, but we also suggested to be a science of the unexpected with formal definition. What does it mean to be unexpected? What does it mean to be correct in good handling? How do you quantify the risks and the values associated with that? And there is a whole uh, range of issues here that we don't have enough time to go into. And one of them, how do you tie unexpected and uncertainty and probability of events and so on. In summary, autonomous systems are bound to run into unforeseen situations regardless of how well and how thoroughly the planners and designers and users and stakeholders uh, have considered all the possibilities for the lifetime of the system. Still, paradoxically, it is possible to prepare for this surprise and you said then that if we're prepared, it's not a surprise, but we set aside the logical paradox and we translate that into certain things that as engineers and scientists we want to do. What we do in this uh, new ideas and emerging research talk is it provides some seeds for design periods, engineering methodology, and some scientific foundation uh, for uh, uh, dealing with the unexpected. Finally, I want to thank the Israeli Science Foundation that have fund this and several other funds for the Visa World's uh, uh, office and other friends and colleagues uh, with whom we worked and suggested many useful ideas. We discussed this topic in a high school workshop, high school student workshop at the Weizmann Institute and the students also had very interesting insights and reaction that uh, helped us with this presentation. Thank you very much for attending this and I wish everyone a successful conference and good health to all.